everyone. I think what I'm... <laughs> Man, I think I'm going to lose my train of thought halfway through the intro. <sighs> G'day everyone and welcome to another ACS or more assertive modding stream. My plan for this evening, as it is evening here, which is unusual for me, I don't normally stream in my evenings. My plan is to get the kind of test mod up so that I can well give something to you guys to test out to see whether my and really Lucas's coding has worked because he wrote most of the stuff for my updated version of the way that these bases are going to behave so these bases are my new versions of the assertive installations the old versions are over here the ones that I haven't yet updated I've deleted the ones that I've updated the sorts of things that I've done to update them are using little data pads I've added bits of story and stuff for you to find if you go and look inside the cargo of each of these bases I've changed up the internal layout of one of these towers so that it's a bit different so there's actually something more unique between them other than just different turret placements because meh it was kind of just a bit lame with that and thanks burial north um i just kind of i wanted something a bit better and my plan is potentially with assertive installations to completely rebuild these things uh, make them human scaled. My initial thought in my head around the design of these was something somewhat alien or robotic. But since the rest of these ones are very much human scaled, I thought I would try and go that way with, with the revamped assertive installations. So what I've done, with the help of Lucas, is I've got Rival AI controlling the antenna range of these bases to expand it and contract it and rival AI also controlling the spawning of any time you get inside that antenna range. What that means is the vanilla drone spawning is not used at all in the new version or will not be used at all in the new version and that means we can have those little drones like I showed in the last one the cute little just single forward gatling type drones. Uh, so, what I need to do now is, uh, got some stuff here, go into my assertive installations rival AI, I have got some prefabs in here I think maybe, um, I've got research base I want, okay I've got to get rid of that and just do all of these ones that are in front of me. Uh, Jason, I'm not sure that we're going to be doing another top engineer, to be brutally honest. Um, at least not for a while. I don't know that it's going to happen again anytime soon. So something else I have done with these bases, for those of you who run servers or who want to make it a bit easier for you to clean them up, was something that Pav suggested I do, and that Lucas does with his, which is give them a grid name that makes them very easy to identify in your entity list. So if we go to our entity list up here, you'll see that we've got NPC, Assertive Installation, Observation Outpost, and then the different numbers of all of them. Whereas the old ones just had the names. Having that prefix makes it a lot easier to clean up stuff if you want to delete it later. So, I think I should be ready to export these. Uh, let me just show... I'll show this base off fully. So, previously in these, we had pretty much nothing. I just had the stuff laid out. I've introduced things like the research table because it adds a bit of detail to a research station. Uh, I put little bits of loot inside the armory, inside the lockers. So you got some clan collar and some power kits. And another thing you need to check is the beds because I put a journal in here. This is a journal entry that was written for the Talking Dead, which is on the Discord server. You've got the Talking Dead channel. This channel on the Discord server is for people to submit stuff for me to put into these data pads. And there are quite a few entries 
and I'm just searching through them and picking ones that I like for the particular base that I've built. Most of them were focused on ships, and I'm going to be putting them on the assertive cargo ships as well. Because I think having that extra little bit of detail is quite nice. Something else I am planning on doing with some of these bases is making some of them damaged so that I have a reason to use the bodies. Because I, I think it's kind of nice having access to these now. These damaged bases are derelict but not destroyed. They're still going to be functional. They're still going to call in help, but they should be a little easier to take on than some of the others. But it's more just to have a little bit of extra variety than anything else. Uh, Leo is a donut. How would I describe Rival AI? Rival AI is another spawning and AI control framework that Luke's de Lucas has developed. So you have the modular encounter spawner. It is the thing that makes bases like this spawn on the planet or cargo ships spawn in atmosphere or cargo ships spawn in space. It's quite helpful for... Uh, it's the thing that actually makes those thing makes those grids appear in the world, and it controls that behavior. What Rival AI does is allow you to have triggered behaviors, allow you to have complex drones that actually fly and shoot with their front turret, front mounted guns, and all this sort of stuff. So it's an additional framework on top of that that allows you to have much finer control and allows you to do some stuff that is really really cool. So I'm just going to make sure, before I export all these bases, that I have added a remote control block to all of them, because they all need to have one as part of making it functional for Rival AI. Yep, remote control on that one. And... Is there remote control on this one? I don't think there is. No. Okay, I haven't put one on there yet. Hey guys, so everyone is dropping in now. <laughs> Hopefully uh, this will allow a few people who don't normally get to catch me live to catch me live because this is a very unusual time for me to stream. Even though being Australian it really should be the time I stream more because this is evening time for me but I actually prefer doing my streams in the morning because I am one of those weird morning people. Okay. <laughs> well, Ragnarok, 4.30 in the morning is probably a time you should be, uh, most people would be sleeping, I would have thought. But, uh, glad you're here. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, these bases need to have remote controls. Oh no, I've added remote controls to these ones. I know where they are. Uh, yeah, that one can't have it. These two, did I add remotes to these two? Um, down here. Up here? Yes, okay. About the other one. Oh, crap. Oh, that's right, those. That. Oh. I think I might have forgotten to put a remote in here. Oh no, there's one here. Cool. Alright, all these bases are ready to go. So my plan for this evening's stream is to get all of these bases into a working mod. So that I can release it for you guys and you can test it for me. <laughs> and see if it's working as I intend. So, time to export. F no, not F12, F11. Export clipboard to file. Export clipboard to file. Export clipboard to file. And I have to do this for all of these. So 
So, those of you who haven't seen one or haven't watched me do those sort of thing before, these bases do deliberately have flaws to their defenses. So, don't be surprised if you see something that makes it like, ooh, I could easily approach from this angle. That's intentional. I don't want to make these things impregnable because then it's not fun to play it, to fight against them. You can't use the fun tactics. All right, let's exit to main menu, save. Now I'm going to show you guys the um, drones that I've made because I made a few extra new little drones to play around with. Uh, drones, there we go. Here we go. I try and think of this stuff from a game design point of view rather than a creating a behemoth challenge point of view. Uh, no plans for a new top engineer as I mentioned before, Wacker Stamper. <laughs> Get to hear Nab to do voices for the drones like in Frostbite. I was actually thinking of doing something else, but potentially adding some voice to these things in the future. But that's a distant plan I have. Um, so what I've got the mod set up to do at the moment is to send some chat, text chat, but it can also play an audio file. So I could theoretically have it play a radio chatter so yeah here we go this is the mosquito drone this is the first one i made and which i used for the rival ar tutorial i've added a little bit of flair to the back of it but otherwise it's pretty much the same then we've got the mayfly which i designed in the last one which is a bit fatter has twin separated turrets and then we have the Wasp, which has a double center-mounted Gatling gun. So, hang on a second, just got a band of spammer. There we go. Uh, so this is the Wasp, and I took some inspiration from my recent designs for the remora in terms of just putting a little bit of flare on the end there. But yeah, I think the wasp will be a little bit nastier than these two just because its fire is right in the midline and it'll be a bit heavier. But none of, none of these should be super challenging because they're not using turrets. So the way they have to fight with rival AI is much more interesting to fight against. Uh, these, I think, have got... Yeah, they've got the correct naming set up. I haven't exported them either yet. There we go. Right, coding time. <laughs> Save changes, yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's just quickly open up another one. So your local roaming space engineers folder is where stuff the things get exported to. Let's get rid of that. And I want to get rid of those two from the mod and bring all of these across to my atmospheric bases small group. Although maybe I'll just get rid of the small, medium, large. Ah, oh, no, I'll leave it for now. Atmospheric drones. Don't know if those are the correct ones, so I'm going to replace them. Yeah, something around a 3,000 hours in Space Engineers at the moment. I'm sure it'll go higher. Now that I've got all those over there... All the files in the right spot. I need to zoom this in so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then start adding them to my spawn groups. 
Is that the correct spawn groups? Yes, it is. So before I go into adding the spawn groups, what I might do is show you guys how the war and peace mode for the bases works. Um, Ragnarok, Lucas is working on something that f on making his AI able to fire from ships that have broadsides. So you could have something come alongside you and fire its broadsides at you, but that's not in yet, I don't think. So War and Peace mode is my way of making the antenna range on the base go from close to large. So when it's in peace mode, it'll be close, and that means you have to get quite close to the base in order to spawn one of those drones to come and fight you. So that's 1800 meters is my current setting for that. After a period of time between these values, it will trigger to war mode, and then it will go to a large range. And that large range is about, I think I've got it set to 15 kilometers. Yeah, 15 kilometers. And then it'll sit there for a period of time between, oh wait, between these values. So these values are in milliseconds. So that's 1500 milliseconds to 3000 milliseconds. And then the peace mode is 780,000 to a million and 80,000. So I think I set that to around to average around 15 minutes and then average around 40-ish minutes, something like that. I can't really remember. But the idea is that you get long enough between the time when drones are coming after you to build up and repair from the last time it happened. And that you don't get it constantly under attack because the spamming attack of drones that the assertive mods have been known for uh, something I'd like to try and drift away from. And the beauty of this doing this, I don't know if this is run by per base or globally. It should be per base. So it may be that you get spammed constantly, but it'll be from const it'll be from different directions. because it'll be different bases sending the drones against you. And then, as an extra backup, there is a proximity trigger that I've built into the bases so that if you get within a thousand meters, even if you've taken out the antenna, there'll still be a drone that gets called in. Which I'm not sure I want to leave in, but I kind of like the idea of leaving in for now. Uh, and I might get rid, might say max actions of three for that cool so my spawn groups should be set up for those drones already so we've got our small atmospheric drones here mosquito mayfly and wasp yep and then I also created drone squadrons so that I can spawn in multiple at once so it doesn't have to be just a mosquito, a mayfly, or a um, wasp. You could get a mosquito and a mayfly. Or you could get a mayfly and a wasp. Or you could get all three. So that could mean that sometimes it gets a little bit nastier. Now, time to add the bases. Uh, let's just do that. And... Start with the top one. Oh, rats. Uh, I might actually start with this one because I know that that Y value is correct for this base. Yeah, I guess so, Ragnarok. I could make the close range one actually spawn right on top of you rather than the other ones which are called in from several kilometers away. So the drones at present that the antenna calls in, they actually get... One second. Yeah. 
they actually get called in from about three to four kilometers away. So they don't drop on you straight away. They actually have to come to you from a distance, which I quite like. All right, that goes there. Can I atmo easy behavior? No. Is base atmo small behavior? Oh no. I need to rename that. Or do I? No, no, I'll leave that. I'll leave it easy. <laughs> Eisen, I was I was trying to reach the door because I heard Capac getting ice and I wasn't sure how much it had come through on the mic. Uh, cool. One spawn group done. I'll just get rid of that bit. I don't need to have that commented section. And time for number two. Yeah, it is a shame that you can't quite launch the drones from a connector, but if in the future I wanted to, I could have the um, drone, like rival AI's spawn mechanisms can be good enough that you could launch something from a hangar for larger bases. That is entirely possible. Oh, what am I doing? I can just type this quicker than I can copy it. 43 and 44. Da, da, da. Next one, watch a base. We'll do those next. So, the other thing that I want to change and I think is really going to be important for making the assertive cargo ships a little bit more visible is I'm going to change them so that they're not using the antenna spawning mechanism either they're just going to use a proximity spawn. So their spawning is going to be done with the rival AI proximity, which means I can set their antenna range to say eight kilometers, meaning you'll know if there's one flying nearby. It won't be just something that happens to be up in the sky that you spot if you're paying attention, which seemed like a great idea and something interesting when I first thought of it. But as it turns out, is actually a terrible way to spawn stuff because people don't know that it's there. It doesn't make their world feel alive. It just is something that is occasionally there and they're like, oh, I hadn't noticed that that thing was working. It actually seems to be better if you slap people in the face with a, <laughs> a uh, radio readout so that they know that it's there. Okay, that should be all the spawn groups that are needed. And I'm going to have to spawn in each of these bases and ensure that their height above the ground is right. Yeah, Kukabok. The That's why I, it is nice to make things feel more organic and have stuff not popping in from immediately close. That's why I don't really like the antenna spawner. And that's why I've made the drone spawn several kilometers away. So even though they do pop in, the chances of you seeing that pop in are minuscule. Okay, now... Is there something else I needed to do here? I don't think so. I think that should be everything. The 
behavior file for the fighter style attack is set up for all of the drones. Yep, okay. Uh, then I just need to make sure this is set up to spawn the correct drones for the correct behaviors. So we've got our triggers, which are all of the, the proximity and then the triggers for the war and peace, and then the antenna trigger. So I wanna look at the spawners. So the proximity spawner could spawn the mosquito alone, the mayfly alone, the wasp alone, or the mosquito and mayfly. And at the moment, they'll. I think I'll still leave them at the three to four kilometers, even though it doesn't necessarily make sense when they don't have an antenna. Uh, Ragnarok, no, I don't think I can change it based on whether you're off the ground or on the ground. Because what about? I, I don't. I don't think there's any means to detect that, unfortunately. So. I just use in the chat, I'm just like, this is a restricted area rather than restricted airspace using something more generic. Thanks, Xeronaut. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going with. It's This is a restricted area. Leave now. Security forces have been authorized to engage with deadly force. And then the next one down is warning. You are now entering a restricted area. Security forces have been deployed to your location. So that sort of is the feel I'm going for. Yeah, Ragnarok, it's not about whether SE has it, it's about whether it's implemented into Rival AI. And how much Lucas wants to spend time on trying to add that to Rival AI. Uh... I might... Add this one as well. Although that does increase the chance that you're going to get a double. So maybe not. Maybe not. No, I'll leave. I'll leave it just as a one in four chance that you'll get a double. <laughs> need, to, need the drones to drop lines from the song I Will Survive uh, uh, maybe I, I don't know that that's I suppose it's fitting in that they won't All right, that was all of those saved wasn't it yeah okay let's test this out Uh, oh, thanks, monster. Unfortunately, yeah. At least you get to catch me for a little bit on your lunch break, even though your lunch break's never as long as you want it to be. Assertive mod test, is that the one? Let me just check. You, I could actually do that, Eisen. I could have them playing Flight of the Valkyries. But I imagine it would get very annoying very quickly. Oh, no, this was me testing. Right. Um, that's not the one. That was me testing whether stuff was broken. Where is the test I set up? Ah, here we go. Leo, whenever I'm live on one platform, I'm only live on it because there are exclusivity agreements that you have to sign with various platforms for that. So there is, it's not okay for me to stream on multiple platforms at once. Um... So, now I need to spawn in some things. Let's just do a random one to begin with. Watch your base number 77. Alright. 
That looked to be correctly elevated, didn't it? No. <laughs> no, it is not. It needs to be raised up about two meters, maybe more, maybe two and a half. Okay, that's fine. Watch a base 77. Small groups. So it is currently set to minus 2.5. So let's raise that up to 0, 0.0. Yeah, thanks Eisen. Yeah, I put these across to my Flipsy channel whenever I remember and have time to do a quick thumbnail for them. Uh, I've got a couple of streams I need to move across there but that I haven't done yet this week. Fuel critical. Uh, probably should have removed that and then saved. See, observation outpost. <laughs> this one needs to get raised up quite a bit. Uh, how many blocks is that? One, two, three, four, five. So that needs to be moved up 12 and a half meters ish. And that one is which one? 23. So this is the sort of thing I have to go through to. Uh, make this stuff work. So maybe bring that up to 10. So bring it up to 10, then this one should be 10 as well. If that one's zero, this one should be zero. Because these should have the same anchor point Uh, I do, so Eisen, there are some underground bases that I've, well, there's one that I've made, and then Pav has made a bunch of extra ones uh, that are part of the assertive bunkers, which is going to be using the same system of the antenna spawning and things, but it creates underground spaces that you can, ex you can use. Uh, Zero Nut, I was using a mod for random weather on the alien planet. Uh, I've Fuel turned it off because it was a little distracting um, and wasn't adding much, but it was kind of fun just to have it for that one off. I may use the weather effects again in the future, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I was in keeping the bunkers separate because I don't want the voxel deformations to be part of the main mod. Because I think having the voxel deformations is a bit less than optimal for everyone. Because of the performance hits. And this one is wrong too. 41. Should be 5 meters lower at least. Oh, that's going to be annoying. They're all different. Alright. I am going to do this methodically now. Because this is getting silly. Uh, Kitamaro, there is a an anchor point for every single grid that is not the center of mass. It is not the center of the box. It is where the first block was placed for Fuel that grid critical. and if that block was then removed the anchor point remains where that block was which can get really weird if you have a look at my projectors tutorial video i show it in that uh slash let me uh, start spawn plant station dot let's start with the top one so let's see if this one is correct first That's more like it. That's about the height I wanted. That's going to be really annoying to fight, though. <laughs> oh, 
So I should point out, to stop the rival AI behavior, you have to depower or destroy this remote control block. So, have fun with that. <laughs> Alright, let's do the next one. What do you do? Let's check it out. Okay, 42 is too high as well. So I may just go through all of them and then adjust them and then I'll go through them all again and just check that they're all correct. Uh, this one needs to drop just a little bit. Uh, that one's 43, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe drop it another two meters. Oh, actually, let's go five. Whoops. Uh, what's the next spawn group? There is a 44. <laughs> yeah, Capac, this is what I'm doing. That seems to be at the right height. Happy with that one. So 44 is okay. Then we need to do watch base 76. How was work, Capac? Presuming you're still listening and haven't gone off to play Noita or Final Fantasy 7. Be enough with the height of that one. Seventy-seven. So yeah, this is this is what I do when I'm testing these things because it it is a. Uh, oh, I think I might have to get rid of the, some of these. It is a slow process. It is a tedious process. But it's one that I've found is actually really handy to do in front of you guys. Thanks, June. Uh, because a lot of the time I end up messing something up in the process and someone then points it out. <laughs> so it's uh, quite helpful. That one I'm happy with. So let's get on to the next. Okay. And once I get these right, fortunately, I don't have to do them again. And it always feels like heaps more at this point than it does later on. Thanks, Sari. Uh, oh, okay. That one's not as high as the last one, but it needs to go probably one, two, three, probably ten meters lower than it is. That's 22. 10 meters lower, right. 10 meters higher, sorry. Let's go up to 20. Fuel critical. That one's about right, but maybe it needs to go a little higher. Maybe a meter higher. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's all of them. Sweet. Quick load.
You were lame, hey, Kapak. But then you got pizza. I imagine you meant it was lame, but then you got pizza. Fuel critical. Uh, perhaps I'm trying to work out a way to notify people better. I don't really like the idea of just tweeting out whenever I'm live, but I do want to change our... Hang on, let me show you guys. So one of the things that's bugged me is trying to figure out a way to notify people when I have... when Kabak or I are going live. And what I'm going to do is change this stream and video announcements channel. I'm going to... Basically, every time Kapak and I go live, we will at here this channel. So if you don't want to be getting a ping on Discord, what you need to do is right-click on it. Notifications. Uh, oh, how do I edit that? I thought that was where I edited it. Oh, can you only do that on a server-wide basis? It should theoretically allow you to do all messages so any message that we put in here would send you a ping but some people have told me that that they sometimes get a warning saying that this is too large but i think maybe uh discord's changed that behavior because last time i did it it said this server is too large you shouldn't have all messages pinging you but i think this can do it now so just set this channel to all messages so then you'll get a ping whenever uh kapak or i post in here and it's only Capac and I who can post in this channel. No one else can, so you won't get pinged by anything but stuff we choose to ping you with. Hopefully that's a good thing. Ah, oh, sweet. So it's working for Ultimate Ragnarok. So that's that's good. It does work how I wanted it to. So you can choose to get a ping on Discord by just setting your notifications to all messages on here. Which I don't need because I should know. Right, let's go through and spawn everything again! Because it should all be correct now. That's not what I want. I want that. Yeah, Kabak and I have tried a few things to try to notify people when we go live and a number of things requiring Discord bots just straight up didn't work. Uh, let's show off this base properly. So, I am now within the range of that antenna. Which doesn't immediately cause a drone to spawn, but it will. And then we get within a kilometer. And that happens. So I just got sent... Oh, jeez. Okay. That I wasn't expecting. <laughs> just got three spawns. I think I might need to put a cooldown on that one. Because <laughs> that just spawned five drones at once. That might be overkill. Um, huh. Right. I kind of wish a wasp was here. Because I haven't seen, I haven't tested it out yet. I know the mayflies and the mosquitoes work. I love their little striping runs, these things, too. Yeah, it was three spawns, which is... So if we have a look in our base at most small behavior... You'll see where I messed this up. So max action's three for this trigger of the player near. So this needs to have a cooldown put on it. Um like the antenna trigger does. So if I grab these and copy them and put them into 
this. It will no longer spawn them instantaneously. The extra ones will spawn after that's 30 seconds to what's 450 seconds. Come on, brain. Can't do the maths. 7.5 minutes. So anywhere between 30 seconds and 7.5 and minutes. Let's make that 60 seconds. Minimum. So it'll be a random interval between those two. <laughs> yeah, Nanra. I, I do love the... I, <laughs> I loved annoying Kapak with the... Um, trying to convince him to play Terraformacraft way back when. He actually enjoyed it for a bit, which was surprising, because it's a bit more hardcore than he normally likes in terms of survival stuff. But yes, I am on that Discord. As well as many, many, many others that I don't pay any attention to. Reload. We'll test that again. You haven't tried out the 1.12 port of uh, Terraformer Croft. I want to, but I just haven't had the time. Uh, I started trying out Terraformer Croft Plus, the still 1.7.0. 10 one but it kept crashing so I gave up on it um, do, 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 do. what was I doing I was spawning stuff I was spawning the next base so we can test that behavior again make sure I don't get people overwhelmed by drones At least instantaneously. Ah, uh, yeah. So Terraformer Craft is a very hardcore survival mod for Minecraft. Uh, proper hardcore realism in inverted commas survival. Uh, let's see what happens. I might just stay outside the radius and see if I get any drone spawns. Ah, uh, yeah, Ragnarok. Uh, with five of them, they were having trouble hitting me, but remember, these bases are intended to spawn from the very beginning of your game. These aren't supposed to be things for late game when you've got tanks and stuff. This is stuff that might shoot up your equivalent of a Goofy. So they need to be easy enough to manage at that level. Uh. Oh, there we go. So that's an antenna spawn. Oh, that's a wasp. Perfect. Is it working? That is a resounding no. Why are you not working? Pretty confident under that block there is the remote control block. Yep, and it's got the purple of rival AI, which is good. Uh, did I somehow manage to build this without gyroscopes? It looks possible. They are batteries. <laughs> And yes, it looks like I forgot the gyroscopes on the wasp. Good job, Splitzy. Good job. That'd be why this is not flying. Ugh. How did I manage that? Seriously. Me and gyroscopes, what is it? Uh, 
let's fix that. Fix the problems as they come up. This drone is not for turning. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yeah, Daz, the cockroach could theoretically be put in as a high level challenge. I don't think I'm going to do that because anyone with anything but a fairly high end PC will hate me for doing it because it will cause a big hitch in the game whenever it spawns. Alright. Can I sneak in a gyro or two? I may have to go on the... Oh no, they can't go on the back there. Uh, yeah, under here will work. There you go. Yeah. Easy. Uh, da, 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 da. Export, grab my wasp that actually has gyroscopes. Place that. I don't know if I have to delete this, but I'm going to just in case. Now we can load up and test again. <laughs> yeah, knock off cockroach. Uh, homing grinder drones. Uh, that'd work, I think, in space, but not so much on the ground. No, uh, I, I am probably not ever going to add the cockroach to this. For a variety of reasons, one of them being what I mentioned before. But also, I don't, I don't feel like the cockroach should be part of this. Even though Thumbs stole it. It just doesn't have the right feel to it for what I want for the mod mods. Alright. Let's hope we get a wasp to spawn. Let's check what happens when I get within a kilometer this time. Oh dear. Nothing. I might have broken that trigger. <laughs> yeah, cut back. <laughs> That's exactly right. Thumb stole it, but he will never unlock its true potential. Okay, I've broken that trigger. What did I do wrong? Dang. Alright, we're going to go back to one. I'm going to get rid of this. I think I know what the problem is. So, by setting those cooldowns to what I did, what I was actually telling it to do was it must wait a minimum of 60 seconds after the player enters that area. It's not about when the next one spawns. It's when even the first one, which doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't do what I wanted to do. I think there's a way to do that, but and the and Lucas might have even shown me how to do it. But I can't remember. And unfortunately, this is not a good time of the day for Canadians. Uh, 
that one looked all right above the ground, so let's get the next one. Two birds with one stone on this. I don't know if I can put a cooldown in the spawner. Can you put the cooldown in the spawner, Yoshi? Because you've done stuff with this. Because that does make more sense. Okay. We have an incoming wasp. That is actually incoming. Yay! Wasp coming to attack me. But hopefully this does start shooting as well. Nice run on me. Cool. Ah, uh, no, the wasp is the same speed. They're all using the same setup. Now, if I leave the one kilometer range and go back inside it, what happens? Nothing. Thanks for checking that, Yoshi. Much appreciated. Um, we can probably just try... Uh, I kind of need the first one to happen. Wait, didn't... <coughs> there was something... Lucas and I did cover this in the tutorial. Um... I think I need to nest some conditions in so that it'll spawn instantaneously the first time, but then delays for the subsequent spawns. Um, I'll have to try and get my head around that later, but for now we'll just leave it at one. As if you get within a kilometer, an extra drone will spawn. That's fine. The antenna seems to be spawning correctly, which is good. Um, the wasp is behaving correctly, which is also good. So the drones are working, the bases are working. Are working. Okay. So Yoshi's saying spawn minimum cooldown value and spawn max cooldown value. If I do that, then there'll be. But I uh... see that'll work, Yoshi. But. It... I'd still need the trigger to trigger multiple times. So I think it creates the same problem. Whether I have it on the trigger or the spawner because of how I've set it up. I think what I'm going to need to do is set up a condition to be checked. So um, if we have a look at War and Peace trigger 1, this is... It'd be like, this is the trigger one, and then a second trigger, it will set a boolean value. Which can then get checked by the next one to see whether it wants to spawn again and again. Um, Yeah, I'm not worried about the chat not spawning, Yoshi. I'm worried about the spawner... I want the spawner to instantaneously spawn when you get in there the first time and then there'll be a delay and it keep on happening again and again. Um, so I, that'll require more work than I'm willing to do on stream right now. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get my head around doing that right at the moment, but that is something I need to fix. So it's good to discover this, actually. Um... Uh... What was I doing? I was testing the rest of the bases to make sure they're spawning in at the correct height. This one looks good. 
Now, don't worry about those turrets not shooting at me. I am untargetable. Critical. That's 44. Let's get the next one. <laughs> what a time to be watching that. <laughs> oh! Yes, Yoshi, that's probably it. Starts ready. Yes. Uh, let me try that. Because I think I can actually put that in the trigger. I don't need to have it in the spawner. Because I want the trigger to, mult to trigger over and over again. Um, let's just check this next base. Because I'm... Got to do my thing. Is that at an appropriate height? Yeah, that's pretty much spot on. Ah, uh, yeah, rival AI drones will ignore the untargetable thing. Untargetable is only for turrets. <clears throat> So, back to this, let's do this the lazy way, get rid of that, uh, <coughs> Uh, Yoshi, I'm not likely to look at the targeting profile stuff too soon. I would love to, the stuff that Lucas is adding, but I honestly don't think I will have time to with the other stuff that I want to get done at the moment. Much as I would like to get my head around the deeper, more involved stuff in modular encounters, I just, I just run out of time to do it, unfortunately. But yeah, I, w I do want to do it for the ignoring stuff in safe zone things and stuff like that later. But I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll dramatically change how the mod works for me to delay getting the updated versions of these mods out. Uh, I want core system tags, trigger. Starts ready, yeah, it's just starts ready true. There we go. Now this should work as I intended it to. Uh, for those of you not aware, Yoshi Wolf 22 is the author of a couple of mods that work with MES as well in addition to something that I've been using recently so is um quite up to speed on this stuff where is it oh what where's it gone I thought it was on my first page of stuff So as you can see, Yoshi Wolf is the author of the alien weather generator that's been doing the random that did the random weather on uh, Survival Unlikely. Uh, Watch about seventy six. We've done. Let's get the next one. Seventy seven. You're welcome, fish bait. Uh, the um, the Flipsy channel is something I try. I'm trying to do a better job of getting stuff up to quickly, and also getting uh, Capax, the Capac Chronicles of Survival Unlikely, up there as well. 
I got a few up in the last week or two, which I was happy about. Yeah, the sandstorm was awesome for making the spiders scarier. Don't be surprised if I manually trigger some things in that just to mess with Capac a bit. Alright, there we go. We got a spawn immediately. Let's see if we get another one while I stay within that thousand kilometer, uh, thousand meter, or if I... Yeah, I should, because I'm still within the thousand meters, we should get both... Ooh, hang on, let's take out the antenna. That way any other spawns will be based on the proximity, not the antenna spawn. see what happens. Oh, that'd be quite handy to have some admin commands to adjust it on the fly. Come on. Should have made the cooldowns shorter. <laughs> Because this could be anywhere up to seven and a half minutes. A rifle. Give me a rifle. I want a rifle. Oops. Oh dear. That mayfly didn't do well. So, <laughs> yeah, it may not fly. Oh, it did a lot of damage to itself. Oh, yeah, that's right, Yoshi. Um, yeah, so I can actually make encounters in with modular encounters spawn weather and Yoshi's already got that happening with his stuff which is quite cool oh we got another mosquito sweet okay this is working as intended So, if this is working as intended, I just need to check out the rest of the bases. I'm going to lift this one up a little bit, I think. So which one was this? This was the 77. Uh, it needs to go a little bit higher. We can go up one. Let's check out outpost 22. Once I've checked out the height of all these, then I just need to create a thumbnail. And we can post this to the workshop for everyone to take a look. Tell me what else I've broken in the mods. Uh, that looks pretty spot on. I'm happy with that one. Next one is the last one. Critical. I'm happy enough with this as well. Uh, kind of, unfortunately, have to have the stairs sometimes sinking into the voxels. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> yeah, Yoshi, you do need to make a public test uh, at some point. No, don't rush it though. If you're not feeling it's ready, then don't put it out. Take your time. I'm just thinking this is ready for people to test so that I can find out if anything's particularly broken about it. And it seems like it's okay. 
which means I want to open up my workshop folder and set of installations and my thumbnail. Yep, someone could just shoot the scaffolding. That's exactly the idea. Uh, Leo, the idea of these bases is to make it easy enough that if you know what you're doing and you've got a rifle, you may well be able to just take out the thing supporting the turret rather than the turret itself. Um, what shall we do here? Is our remote control. Where did I put it on this thing? Oh? I checked this. There was a remote control on it. Where is it? Top four behind grated cattle. Energy low. Oh there. Duh. Thank you. Duh, duh, duh. Just wanted to get that. So then can put it on here. Nope, that's not the wand I want. I want the quick select tool. So I can just get a remote control that I'm just going to add to this thumbnail. And then I'm going to write test on it about a thousand times just so that I get fewer comments of people saying Why doesn't this have all the stuff in it? Why are you replacing your other mod? Whoops. Dang it. Uh, oh, hang on. Forgot to do that bit. There we go. Oh yeah, so for those of you not familiar with how I did that screenshot, it's in Windows 10, you can press Windows key plus Shift plus S, and then you can crop a part of your screen as a screenshot, which is crazy handy. Um, test version, red. Duplicate layer. Do you think that's going to be obvious enough? Maybe another one. Oops. <laughs> Arrow, as you say. Uh, hmm. Oh, hang on. I know what it needs. Needs that. Oops, that's not what I meant to press. Dang it. Yeah, needs that to make it stand out even more. <laughs> I 
Actually, you know what? I'm I'm gonna put one in full opacity over the main text. Uh, duplicate layer. Here at the top. There we go. <laughs> Alright, that will do. Let's give it a name, which is Rival AI Test Thumb. And now to make it small enough that Steam doesn't hate me. And will actually let me post it. Right, let's see if that worked fine. Yep, 846 kilobytes. Perfect. There we are. Now, I can go back to Space Engineers and I can publish this thing so you guys can check it out. Energy low. <laughs> ah, golly. Assertive test version installations. Sounds like a finished mod. Yes, some... That's <laughs> so annoying. Some people are going to think it is. Ugh. The internet, why? Why? Why do people not read? Oh, hold up. Hold up. I need to do a thing. Let's get rid of that. Let's add test to the name. Publish. Yes. Um, NPC. Okay. Oh yeah, I know, I know, Dave. I know people are gonna <laughs> comment about it being a test for version just to be annoying now. I know I bring that upon myself. It is what it is. <laughs> All right, let's uh, give you guys the link in chat. There we go. And at title and descriptions. This is a test version for the new build of assertive installations and eventually assertive cargo ships. Just, just in case, this is a test version. Please tell me if there are bugs. Seriously, it's a test. Test. There we go. Da da da. <laughs> nice one, Yoshi. <laughs> and add my links. Yeah. That's not how you spell splitzy. Done. My usual thingies. Cool. That was actually everything I wanted to get done just now. Um, 
but maybe I could be convinced to have a look at one of the other drone base builds. No killing of Kapak. This is uh, building stuff that will kill it, kill him for me. Maybe, or he'll have hope. I'm hoping Kapak will have a lot of fun looking through these things because I've put little Easter eggs and goodies in for him to read and discover and a reason to actually search through the bases, not just kill the stuff in them and move on. <laughs> uh, yes, Capac, your immersion is broken. My immersion. Definitely looking forward to those gradual sandstorms, Yoshi. something completely new. So I've got my little base with an outhouse. I've got my really little base. And I've got my bigger base on stilts. Maybe I try something that's got two little two medium-ish buildings and kind of split leveled. There's a different thing. just locked to the same grid as these ones. No. Okay, I've missed something in chat. Just looked up, read something, and was like, that doesn't make sense. map out something rough and then I'll add more bits to it. Oops. So that sort of thing and then maybe like a catwalk coming off the back up to a higher level. Oh it could be like a actually no let's not do that might just make a... Oh no, 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 we'll do that. I was about to try and make a multi-story, like, has stuff on two levels sort of building, but I think it'll be more... I think that'll need to get much bigger before it works properly. Ah, uh, Ragnarok, I was thinking the more alien ones might get their own faction eventually so instead of the alien bases getting just removed I was thinking I would give them a separate faction so that you can have multiple things that are part of the assertive thing but one of them will be the aliens and I might need to uh, come up with a reason why <laughs> for that at some point uh, That's the sort of thing I was thinking. I might make this a different size than the other one, though. Oops. Oops. Yeah, something like this. So we're going to need two doors on this lower one. And I think, perhaps... there and there use those new DLC doors because they look nice yeah Eisen, it would be nice to have some more flowing organic-y stuff 
the more interesting non-human designs. Yes, Capac. Ew. Flowing organic y stuff. another two by one base is it gonna look funny want to have uh, straight up standard corners on the ends here. I think it looks more interesting when you use the 2x1 bases. Uh, glad we could make you smile there. I'm sure Capac feels the same. So we've had a few messages along that those lines recently and it, it's nice to know we can make an impact that way. with our ridiculous behavior. Yeah, Capac, I kind of agree with you on this. I, I'm not sure that I would want to have to do all the wiring in Space Engineers. Um, having to do it in Stationeers to that extent was... Like, it's fun for that, but the scale you build in Space Engineers is so much bigger. So I'm not sure I would want to have to do all of the wiring for some of the mega things that we built. Can you imagine having to do the wiring to do for the whole agglomination? Oi. That'd be horrendous. Oh yeah, or the RX-2094. <laughs> Good point, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. That would be awful. Yeah, Icewind Drake, I do know that um, Station Ears plans to go bigger, but I think they may well run into some of the problems that meant space en that caused Space Engineers to wind back what they tried to do. Because uh, Space Engineers initially had stuff being visibly shown moving through the conveyor system. Uh, and used to do updates of the conveyor system every tick, but now that got reduced and wound back just because it was too much of a performance hog to do that. And I reckon Stationeers will run into those same problems. Eventually. <clears throat> but yeah, stuff like Capac's mentioning like ropes and tethers would be 
nice, considering they did it in um, Medieval Engineers, so they might be able to do it here. Yeah, Yoshi, I saw the conveyor tether thing. I don't see that ever happening. Um, honestly, I would be stunned if Kane added something like that officially. doesn't need to be as private because this is a one person thing. Uh, toilet there. Shower there. And I'll put an armor in here. Yeah, something like Capac suggesting where they have hydrogen and oxygen on its own system and added the fuel hoses for it. So that you had to do that sort of piping. That'd be interesting because that's a system that's already fairly heavily simplified. Uh, maybe I will go two beds in here, actually. Two beds and then we'll go... Couch. Oh, maybe I haven't got room. <laughs> this is Sims in Space Engineers. <laughs> when I'm involved with interior decoration in this stuff. Uh, that doesn't work. Yeah, that's not good. Um... I need to make this top bit a little larger. So my idea behind this base is there'll be like a, a lab or something in this section. Or, you know, like an office. And then up here is the living quarters. Separated because, I don't know, they handle stuff that could be harmful here. So they don't want to keep, they want to keep the living quarters separate. That was sort of the justification I had in my head. Where did I put lights there? Now? Let's turn that light off. And... Stairs. Uh, I need to have the antenna on one of these bits, so I might add it here. And that gives me an excuse to do this. <laughs> Why does Capac prison have windows? It's not a Capac prison. I haven't made it. I actually have never made a made a Capac prison. Nor has he made a Splitsy prison. Uh, some other people have made a Capac prison. They turned a toilet into a prison for him. Wait a second, does that door stick through here? A little bit. But it isn't upsettingly so. Cool. When did you make a splitsy prison, Kapak? And 
why don't I remember? <sighs> yeah, Roman. I mean, you can tell. It used to be a flood zone when the water was not frozen. That's why they're up on stilts. Yeah, but Kapak, you didn't put me in prison in episode 12. I was put in prison by... Well, actually, you did do it. You were controlling the character that pushed me in. Huh. That is a good point. I'm going to extend this out one more block so I've got more space to play with. Capac, if you want to heckle in voice, you can, if you'd like. But if you're up to something else, don't worry about it. doing the South African accent. Did I do the South... A I did the South African, didn't I? Or did you do it, Cap? I can't remember now. I can't remember which one I actually used. I know I tried doing one. I just can't remember if I actually used it. I want to make this feel like a somewhat more comfortable living space than the other ones that I've built. So I've got... I need to have the bathroom and shower. I think maybe... They could be better placed... Here. kitchen too. Put the kitchen there. The couch over here. Have bed there. Does that look more comfortable? Yeah, actually. I haven't done beds that way, I might do it that way just to make them look like, I don't know, different. Oh uh, yeah, Artone, this is going to be a an AI base. I should use lockers for hallways at some point. I don't think it's the right scale for this structure. As I do want to put in... Uh, how am I going to do this? That, then window. Just 
which will give me an attachment point for what I need to do next. This is another window, and then I want to have LCD here. Oh, that's wrong thing. Text. What? Is that add you? There we go. So I want to have a TV for the couch. Yeah. Um, yeah, Yoshi, I could do a damaged version of this, uh, where there's, like, mossy stuff growing all over it. That could be interesting. I always prefer to do a clean version first and then mess stuff up. I find I can hold together some logic of how things are built better that way. So we got a kitchen, we got a couch, we got that. We need a little set of table and chairs. Which I've actually left enough room to do something like this. It's kind of nice. And because this is the fancy place, it can get some flower, some plants. Place that down there. Yeah, getaway base for two. That's kind of the story I was thinking of for this. It's um, some people who are very close to one another who work here, or who live here, and kind of freelance for the company. That spot is the only spot I can put a light in. So at least there's one. Happy little research lab of love. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good one, Eisen. Yeah, pool table and a bar would make it a pretty good man cave. Is this gonna look weird from... Oh, no, I can't do that. I need to have... Full block. Ooh, oh. Do I want to make this roof all glass? Or is there enough glass here anyway? I feel like there might be enough glass without making the roof. That way as well. This is going to look weird. Oh no. As soon as I do that, I'm going to have to put... Because I was going to put wind turbines on top of here, but I'll have to put them on wheels. That's okay. I was going to put a solid block, but a wheel is better. Uh, the questions are all good, Leo. Don't stress. Actually, not two on this bit. 
one on each. They looked a little bit too tightly packed when I put both on there. I think that's going to look better. Yeah. So the reason for those catwalks that I placed down is so that I can put a little bit of a window there. And I wanted the window to be the block above because then, once I put this glass in, I can put the light up against that glass. So the light can be dead center of the room, which I think will be nice. How does this look? It's different. Certainly different. Different, okay. For now, I think. Uh, double. And do my usual thing of making it a little bit yellow. There we go. Ah, who needs privacy if the only other person around is someone you get along well enough with that you sleep in a bed side by side with them? Bert and Ernie style. The bed's in full view from outside, but the bathroom is not. Shower sort of is, but... Meh, the toilet's not. Oh, maybe it is. <laughs> now, do I want to put glass here, or do I want to put something else? Do I want to put catwalks up? I, think I might just go with glass. Put so much else around it. Do that with catwalk. Which is, I know, odd because I'm covering up the window from the thing, but I think it mat looks better with the match to the other end. Yeah. Not too bad for the start of a quick build. Oh, yeah. Oh, good point. Use this block. Use the wrong one. Yeah, the bathroom. There we go. I had meant to use that one, but I forgot. Now you pretty much can't see in, and it looks like there's a proper door. Perfect. Nice one. Good one, on Fluffy Dave. So the living quarters are done, now I just need to do this research bit. Or office area, I guess. I mean, what I could do with a base design like this would be make a an extra version of it where instead of just one dormitory coming off this catwalk, I could add a second one. So I add a bigger base with three separate buildings, which I think is kind of cool. And a nice, a nice um, reason to build these things more modularly. Ah, I haven't put corner catwalks here because I need to keep these available for turrets. There's a hiccup then, or something. Lab equipment. Maybe I'll do the desk first, actually. Yeah. 
that. Which I know is weird with the joysticks, but um, I was thinking of... Oh, that doesn't work. I was kind of thinking of having it like desks all around it, but... It, yeah, it doesn't look the part. It's too cockpit. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, that's... That's an interesting idea, Yoshi. Um, using, like, the freight boxes and the story being that they're rushed out. I kind of like that idea. Uh, don't like what I'm doing here, though. This is not working as I intended. Oh yeah, I've got I've got the boxes and have uh, equipment in them in some of these other bases, as well as data pads that people have written for use in these mods, which is kind of cool. doesn't need to be as complicated as I'm trying to make it out. Maybe I just need to have some freight boxes and the research benches and then a table down this side. And honestly, this kind of looks the part. need more than this. Uh, Veritron, the use of the DLC stuff in this does not affect what can spawn. The really nice thing that Keen did was add DLC blocks to their own vanilla spawned stuff. And therefore MES is allowed to spawn stuff with uh, DLC blocks. Which is quite handy. So you get the advantage of this. I can. It means I can detail this stuff with DLC blocks. I guess from Keen's point of view, there's no real harm in letting us use DLC blocks for this because it just encourages more people to want them because we're showing off what you can do with them. So I, I, I imagine that's why they put them in their vanilla encounters as well. So that you go, ooh, I like that. That's kind of cool. I want that. Oh, I have to buy that. Right. Um, now, I need to move this glass up a level like I did on the other bit. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Looks a bit weird. Uh, I wasn't thinking plants for in the research lab. I've got the plants over in the living area though. But come back at, at some point. I will need to get. I will want to get you in to make up some stuff like this and try and keep it small. Because you do come up with some interesting ideas that even if I don't use it in the form you make it, I often uh, it often helps me come up with something that's better than what I'd started with, or different in some interesting way. I do that, and then put a light here, and then put. Top attached with the light. And get rid of these. Change this around to the same. Oops. 
That's the wrong button. And we can go with the same thing down here and light. Cool. Oh. <laughs> steel, the word is steel. It is not, Kabak. And if you're thinking that was a uh, stream delay, no, that was me just not realizing Kabak had said anything for a while. Oh, don't. Oh. Don't normally leave the intensity that high. I do have something that I think would be fun to do for a later lab if I have enough room. Which would be put down rows of the planters with some lab equipment at the end. Um, so it looks like they're experimenting on plants. So you just put row up, like have... You need enough space that you could put three or four rows so it looks intentionally uh, crowded with them. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty happy with this. Made something new. <laughs> Wasn't anticipating getting this much done, but... I think this will be a nice start for a bit of a modular base as well, which I'm quite happy about. Because the more, the e whoops, the easier I make it for me to create more bases, the better. Because that means you guys hopefully won't run into too much of the same content in a hurry. Like, the test version of the mod already has if you keep, if you count each individual version, nine bases. But it only really has three that look different. So the more modular it is, the more different I can make each piece look. It looks like an elephant. What? How does it look like an elephant, Kabak? <laughs> All right, Kavak's walking in. He apparently can't explain it. Look, so it's got four stumpy legs. Yeah. And it's grey. And the stairs at the back are like a tail. And at the front bit, it's like a big head on the front and a trunk going down <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> okay, need to add some blue. Where will I do the blue? I was thinking initially just over the ends like I've done with the other bases. Hopefully the blue makes it easy to unsee it. And sort of. Oh, actually, that should stay grey. Just have four columns. Hmm. Now for this space, this is going to be the tricky bit. Let's do just blue decorative stuff. Ugh, that looks awful. Let's undo that.
Oh yeah, there's there's gonna be some um, turrets on this. Don't don't worry about that. And you should also, since I put the greater catwalks down the other end, do it down here. I quite like using them over other blocks. It's a nice. It's nice to have that as a vanilla piece. Cool. Uh, so, turrets for this version. Actually, I'm going to do that in blue. One there. at the front like little tusks. No! I'm not making it an elephant! Uh, uh, actually, maybe I could make it more elephant-like. What could I use that's not too on the nose? Ah, oh, here we go. Yeah. I don't mean to do it! I didn't mean to do the on the nose thing. It just came out. Ugh. I've been hanging around with hanging around with DE and Capac too much. That's why that keeps happening. Alright, that is three turrets. I think this base. Could it have four? There's three more than enough. I was going to put a fourth, I'd put it over here. Actually, maybe I'll get rid of this one. So those three cover a few more angles. Without covering it completely. Uh, I'm not putting interior pillars with lights on as its tasks. Where did I put the bat? Oh, the battery's down here, that's right. I should probably put a ba uh, battery in. No, oh, no, it doesn't need it. Nah. Okay, the doors are all closed. So, uh, I think I'm gonna leave that base alone until the next time I stream, because I think um, it might be nice to see if some other stuff gets submitted to the Talking Dead. Uh, chat or have a read through what's there to see if there's stuff I want to put in on data pads in here or if you've got something in mind specifically for this base just you could write something up and post it and I'll probably include it but I'm going to end my stream here I think because that's a whole lot more than I thought I'd get done so if you guys do have happen to have a look at the test version of the of this mod and find a problem, please let me know and I will hopefully be able to fix it or I'll send it to Lucas and hopefully he'll be able to fix it. Um, I will be back with Capac tomorrow, right Capac? 
I believe we have plans to stream some scrap mechanic. Which should be hopefully some fun. Because neither of us have ever played it and it's looks interesting now that they've got the um, survival mode to it. We never tried it with creative mode because neither of us really get all that into uh, games when you're just building for building. So yeah, so there's all that and plenty more to come. And, oh, I didn't finish the... dang it. Good reminder. Hang on. Before I do my outro. I didn't replace this. Wind turbine. There we go. There we go. So yeah. Scrap mechanic, other things, all that. Plenty more to come. And we will see you then. Bye.